Hello everyone and welcome back to the Doctor's Garage. Today I'm with the brand new Land Rover Defender P400e. It's one of the first cars here in the UK. This is a 2022 spec and in this video today I'm going to be talking about what this car is like to drive, what it's like to run about in, some of the key features about this car, how it differs to other Land Rover cars in the range that I've owned previously and just giving you an overview really about what the new P400e engine is all about. So let's start with a little walk around the car and talk about some of the features this car has, particularly this spec. So this is an X Dynamic S spec. As I mentioned, it's the P400e engine, which is brand new to the Defender. And particularly in the UK, it's so hard to get hold of Land Rover Defenders at the moment. There's about a year waiting list. And particularly with the new mild hybrid technology engine, it's even a bit longer than that. So to start with this car, let's talk about some of the features this one's got. So you probably first notice the alloys on this car. So these are project car alloys. So they're aftermarket alloys. This car obviously didn't come with these but actually they look really really good on this car and um, really suit it look a lot better than the standard Land Rover Defender alloys that come with the car and I really like them I think they set this car off really well this is a kind of a black on black spec so this is um, got the dynamic kit on it so it's got a few little black detailings that help it blend in it does have the wheel cover on here this has actually been resprayed and um, black just to make it look a little bit more fitting with the rest of the car Go around this car again because it's the X Dynamic, you get things like the black vents, the black checker plate, it's all kind of blends in really, really well. And you can see on here, you've got the X Dynamic badge there on the front grille too. Overall, really, really like the look of the Defenders in general. I know I've talked about them before on this channel. I love the 110s, I think they're brilliant, brilliant cars. And this new engine, actually, as I'll talk about when we go into driving it, the engine, the capacity, what it's able to do with the mild hybrid technology really makes it quite an appealing choice when it comes to buying a new Defender. So when you're walking around the outside of this car, there's literally nothing that would tell you this is the part electric engine. You have the charge point itself, which is located where the fuel flap is. When you open that, you can see that you have the charge point in here. And that is literally the only thing that you see different about this car. So nothing gives it away that it's the part electric engine, apart from the badge, obviously the P400 and that. And that is it really with this car. So it looks exactly the same as the full diesel or petrol variants. So I think now we've had a look at the outside of the car, let's go for a driving side, talk about the engine, talk about how it's different to drive and talk about the electric components that this car has. So one, two, three. So we're now inside the new Defender, going for a drive. Let's look at some of the technology, talk about the engine, talk about the output and how that electric engine works on a day-to-day -day basis driving this Defender. So the P400e engine is a two litre turbocharged petrol engine. And on top of that, you have a 105 kilowatt electric motor too. Now with just the two litre turbocharged engine, you get 296 brake horsepower. But when you combine it with that 105 kilowatt electric motor that's in the back, that puts it up to a total of 398 brake horsepower, which is pretty decent actually in a car like this. And actually with that as well, your 0 to 62 miles per hour time is considerably quick. It's 5.2 seconds, which is pretty quick for a two and a half ton Land Rover. One interesting thing about the Defender is it's on four wheel drive at all times. So that includes whether it's electric or petrol. Now when you're driving this car, you really don't notice any difference with it being a part electric engine, this PEV technology. What you do get is the fact that when you start this car, it starts off in EV mode, just electric. So when you go around town, it's quite easy just to stay in electric mode without having to put the engines in at all. There are ways to adjust that, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute, about how to put just the electric on or use dual powers. And actually just in electric mode only, this car will get up to 85 miles per hour before then having to use the petrol engine. Now in this car, if you are just gonna be using the electric motor, you get 27 miles of range quoted by Land Rover. I've been driving this car for a couple of days now and it probably translates to about 20 miles of realistic range that you get out of this car. And actually that's not too bad. That's enough for a commute for most people, to do a school run, to make short journeys around town. So 20 miles is actually pretty decent. Now, as with all electric cars, there's different ways to charge these cars. If you go to a 50 kilowatt charger at a fast charge point, you can get this car up to 80% charge in just 30 minutes. If you're looking at an at-home plug-in charger, it would take similarly about two hours to get to 80% battery charge in this Defender. So what are the reasons for buying a part electric Defender? Why would you want to go for the P400 over the other cars? This is slightly more expensive to buy rather than just the standard diesel or petrol variants, starting at around 63,000 pound here in the UK. 
Well, the first thing is you get that electric range. You get, let's say, 20, the low 20 kind of mile range, really, because you can just run on electric, which is great for the environment. Your carbon footprint's reduced, but also your MPG is much better. So Land Rover will claim 85 miles per gallon out of the P400E engine. In real world terms, you do get the around the high 30s from this car. So quite a lot less than what Land Rover would quote, but realistically, that's still not bad if you're getting, let's say, 40 miles per gallon, 37 miles per gallon in a car this size. The downside with having the part electric engine are few and far between really i mean one of the things obviously the price is a bit more expensive you can't tow as much so this car is meant to tow up to three tons whereas normal defenders or the other land rover ranges you can get up to three and a half tons towing capacity so if you're just looking at a towing car particularly the electric one might not be the car of choice. The other thing to say is it has a massive lithium ion battery under the rear load space. So this car can't be configured to have the third row of seating. So it can't be a seven seater if that's why you're looking for a new Defender. So on this car, you've got the option down here of EV mode. And when you press it, you get the options to come up in the middle of your dash. So you've got um, hybrid mode, save mode, and EV mode. So for example, that's quite useful if you're going into a town or a built up city area, you want to reduce your emissions. You can just put it simply straight into the EV mode. Unfortunately, this car, when I do that, it says I need to charge the battery. It's got zero charge on at the moment. But that's quite a nice feature to have to be able to control when and where you use that extra bit of charge, or whether you save it up for another time when you are driving through the cities, you could just reduce it to reduce your pollution throughout the city centers. Another thing to note if you are looking at the PHEV Defender, it can only be available in the 110, probably because of the battery you have to have. There's no commercial variant of this car um, available in the P400 engine at the moment. So I've just pulled over. Let's take a little bit of a better look inside this car and look at some of the features. If you haven't seen inside the Defender before, this is what they look like, the new Defenders. So quite utilitarian. Things like sort of the body panels running through, which is similar to what was in the Puma Defenders or like my Defender that I've got, the uh, TD5. Quite some design structure, but obviously a lot nicer a lot less leaky, a lot less noisy. So you've got things like the grab rail here, which is trimmed in this particular spec. So this is probably an X dynamic extra. You've got the large infotainment system. And actually it's a really nice upright place to sit in. You've got really good visibility out the front across the bonnet, which is quite similar actually to something like a Discovery or the old Defenders as well. This is the new steering wheel that was kind of launched in the Defender, I guess now. And the new Discovery has this in this kind of wheel shape. And you've also got your virtual cockpit too. But as I was driving, you can see on here, the different controls you've got. You've got this EV control just there which is kind of hidden amongst all the other off-road features but when you press it this is where you can change what do you want to go for mode wise and if you see when I put it in EV it does say you've got to charge the battery and um, again on the system here what you can do is you can go through on here and actually if I can find where that is go to eco data and it can tell you here what your driving score is like what your speed was like your, your economy and also go to history too and on this you can see your graph of how driving's been so green being electric and blue being your petrol use when you've been driving so quite nice to be able to reflect on that and have a look so having the eco data on here is quite nice you've also got other things like your your four by four mode your off-road mode and much the same as the other land rovers but it's just a lot more updated than let's say my discovery 5 that i drive at the moment on this car you've also got the electric tow bar so for example on here you can click deploy and you probably hear that noise but also when you're doing it it's slowly bringing out the tow bar on the car bit of a clunk there and now table's out. And you can see that actually, if we do go to the cameras on here, you've now got a tow bar deployed. So quite nice features like that. And you know, a lot of good features for, for towing in general, as you would expect probably from a Defender. And really the Defender itself is really spacious. And one of the things about the Defenders I really like is the headspace. So I'm six foot tall and I've still got another four or five inches of headroom here. The backs are also really, really spacious. So the second row is massive in these cars. And I really like things like the Alpine window that they brought through from the older models. So in inside really really comfortable place to be definitely feels a little bit more um utilitarian a bit more rough and ready than let's say discovery which actually suits a lot of lifestyles discovery is sort of potentially a little bit too plush inside and actually makes it less usable it's more kind of range rover than it is the original land rover is something that you want to work in and something you also want to use for doing activities in really i hope that's been a useful insight into the new p400e defender I'm really interested to know what you guys think of this car. Let me know what you think in the comments below this video. And if you haven't already, click subscribe, watch the rest of my videos on my channel. I've got loads of videos about my Discovery 5, about my TD5 Defender actually. And I'm gonna do quite a lot more content on this particular Defender too. Thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video.